live from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's The Cube. At the VTUG Winter Warmer 2015. Now, here is your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the VTUG Winter Warmer 2015. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon Research Organization and uh, co-host of theCUBE, our live video program. We go out to all the big enterprise IT events, help extract the signal for the, from the noise. Uh, really excited in this segment to have Sean Markham, Senior Systems Admin from IDEX. Uh, welcome for joining us, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Stu. All right, so we're, we're at the Virtualization Technology User Group, so it's always great when we talk to the users, and you are a long time VMware Systems Admin, been back there since the early, early days when most people thought that virtualization was some kind of Linux, right? Exactly, I, I remember when we first got, tried to get virtualization in our environment, uh, my manager was, was kind of skeptical, but he didn't understand why he was skeptical, because uh, they were doing virtualization on IBM mainframes for years, <laughs> so when we came to him with x86, he, was, he thought it was, uh, Different, but Sean, Sean, you were my straight man. The Cube was just in New York City <laughs> yesterday uh, yeah. so, so with the IBM Z announcement, talking about uh, you know Z Linux and virtualization. Yeah. And everything's done. Yeah. As we all know, that have been in the industry for a long time. There's yeah. nothing new out there. The mainframe's been doing it for years, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, let, let's level set a little bit. Tell us a little bit about IDEX. I know you're in the uh, you know veterinary uh, you know biomedical space, yeah. uh, and, and you're a senior systems admin. Uh, what is IDEX? Who do they do? What do they do? And what, what's your role there? Um, we're actually a bunch of companies in one. Um, everything from, from when you bring your pet into the, the veterinarian, in your local vet, uh, they take a blood sample, that blood sample gets shipped off. IDEX is, is a lab that's, that's analyzing that blood sample to find out what may be wrong with your pet. Um, we have a water division that tests uh, for cholera and different water, water-borne illnesses. Um, we're into livestock and poultry. Uh, we're based in Westbrook, Maine, uh, five, about 5,000 plus employees and we're global around the world. All right, how, how many locations you have and can you give some of the speeds and feeds of your IT environment? How many people uh, you have, how many servers, things sure, like that? Sure, sure. Um, I would say, wow, I'm trying to off, rough number off the top of my head, maybe 800 servers. Um, we have employees in the IT group that, it's in the 100 plus, I'm, I can't remember exactly the, the exact number of employees, but um, we're, we're a big SAP shop, we're, we're trying to virtualize everything we can possibly virtualize. Um, All right, so, so where are you along that journey of virtualization? You, you know, what, what, oh, what percentage are, is, is virtualized today, kind of mixed? In, in, in the Windows space, one of the spaces that I'm responsible for, we're, we're, I would say we're up in the 90s of, of virtualization. Um, there's a very few systems, maybe a few uh, Microsoft SQL servers, and then some old deprecated systems that we just, we're waiting for them to die and fall off before. Why, why waste our time virtualizing them, just let them go away. But, uh, All right, so, so is, is that the biggest thing, there's just certain legacy pieces that you'll wait for them to die and then yeah. you'll eventually be, is, is there anything that can't be virtualized in your mind today? Um, no, not really. Uh, well, if you get into something where it has some proprietary hardware card, you know, if, for whatever reason you might still need a Brook Trout card or something of that nature, then, then yeah, okay, it, maybe it can't be virtualized, but, but uh, realistically, I, I, I don't know what couldn't be virtualized, if it's x86. All right, so, so boy, you, you, you've got a lot of history with, with yeah. virtualization. <laughs> walk, walk us through a little bit of the journey. You know, what, what have been the big inflection points uh, in adoption? You know, what, what, let, let's start at the beginning. You know, what really got you on board and you know, what, what led, how, how did you move the organization along? Well, in the, I don't want to say in the early days, but early, there was a point in I think almost everybody's career where they, the manager came to him and says, we're going to build an app server, and we're going to, because Windows servers are like bunnies, they're all over the place. We're going to build an app server, and we're going to try to cram as many apps onto that one app server as we possibly can. And we, we went through it, we did that pain, and anytime you needed to update any one app, you had to take them all down. So to, to update and, and patch and do what, whatever you need to do, it became a scheduling nightmare. Along that same period of time, uh, ESX VMware, uh, came out, or, or was coming out, and uh, us at the admin level said, this is a great solution, this is a great technology, and, and we started trying to get it in, uh, into the uh, production environment. Um, it, it took off great in test dev, you know, everybody was excited to see it in test dev, but then, you know, as 
I can remember different vendors, application vendors, saying we don't support it. We do not support virtualization. And, and nowadays it's, it's hard to find people that say that. You know? So it's, it's, it's good. It's, All right. Sean, can you talk to me a little bit about uh, the infrastructure underneath your, your virtualization? Server, storage, network, what yep. are you using? How has that changed as you've rolled out more and more virtualization? Well, uh, trying to think, how has that changed? Um, well, I mean, today we're, we're in Blade technology. I remember when Blades first started coming out, I was apprehensive to them because of port count, port density for the network. Um, I needed X number of ports for my ESX host. I needed a vMotion port. I needed a management console port. I needed um, several different ports. And when Blades first came out, they were very port limited. Uh, now it's getting to the point where with F Flex Fabric, um, 10 gigabit ethernet, th there's, no, there's no problem. So uh, Blade technology, chassis technology has uh, made it very, uh, very appealing to have Blades. Uh, but in the early days, I remember I kind of shied yeah, away from Blades. Can you share whose Blades you're using? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, we're using HP. Okay. Um, HP Blades, uh, Flex Flabix, um, shoot, I'm trying to think, three par storage in the back end. Um, we're getting into some, some um, oh, shoot. My, my mind's gone blank now, but. Um, it, it, it's all right, yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so. so, so let, let me poke on this. Yeah. Have you looked at any kind of the converged uh, type solutions? I mean, HP's not, got the virtual stack and app stack and everything. Yeah, not, not, in, my, not, in, my current, uh, not in my current role at, in my current company. Yeah. Um, you know, there was some, I've been with some smaller companies, I've been with some larger companies, um, and we looked at some of the converged stuff uh, in past lives, um, but uh, I don't, I mean, I don't want to drop any names, but simplicity looks pretty nice. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, simplicity, but, yeah. Yeah, simplicity, you're, you're I'm sorry. It's, yeah. um, it's all right, yeah. But uh, that's, a, that's a neat looking product. Um, I think the direction that my company's currently in, I, I don't know if it's a fit for us. Um, you know, they definitely, we definitely like the HP um, environments that we have, and yeah, it so, could, could hear. I mean, HP yeah. is you know a longtime VMware partner, yeah. get you a good solid solution for for yeah. the whole stack yeah. uh, for that environment. So, uh, you know, it, it, your 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 company um, it sounds like you're pretty happy with what you have overall. There's always got to be things, you know. What and if you look at virtualization, you know, what what causes what causes you guys trouble still? What is if you could wave a magic wand mm. and say, you know, what, what what would make your life easier in 2015 that you wish you didn't have to do that you did in 2014? Um, you know, this this may be just be, I tend to I tend to be a little bit I don't know if it's old school or. I like to develop my own solutions at times, which, which probably could bite me. Um, and as far as, one of the things that's biting us right now is, is being able to deploy uh, virtual machines rapidly enough to keep up with the business. So, you know, a, a business unit manager can go and say, I'm going to swipe my credit card and go to AWS. And they, they can get as many virtual machines and, and they can bypass IT and completely, you know, as long as they get approval for swiping their cards, um, but uh, it becomes it becomes yeah. difficult for IT to keep up with the speed of business. Yeah, yeah. let me ask you, Sean, is, yeah. it, is there policy in place at your company? Because you, you say as long as they get approval, uh, there's plenty of people that have corporate credit yeah. cards that can sign off on that and yeah. are doing it without IT's knowledge, the old stealth IT. Yeah. So, Sh you, yeah, you know, you, you yeah. brought it, let's, let's talk about cloud for yeah. a second. Yeah. What's your experience at, at your current company and, you know, in general, the balance of, you know, AWS, is that, how does IT work with that or deal with that? Yeah. Um, how much can I go into? Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we're researching the cloud. As far as IT is concerned, we want to go to the cloud. Yeah. We're researching the cloud. Uh, I'm also a strong believer of internal cloud. Um, you know, being able to make our environment internally uh, as robust and as, as flexible as, as, and ideally I'd like to see it become as easy as, as a, an internal department being able to, whatever they do for AWS, they can easily do internally on our own systems. Um, cost savings, I don't see, I, I can't see the cost savings in the AWS space. I see we can provide as good a service and, and for, the, for cheaper money internally, but it's that ease of access to get into the IT. Uh, yeah, IT I, I, a lot of times throws up its own roadblocks. I, I guess, Sean, right, one of the questions is, how much variability is there in your workloads and what applications you're doing and seasonality of what you're doing? Um, is, are, your, are your workloads, you know, what one premise is, if you've got a lot of change, mm 
Mm. Cloud can not only scale up, but scale down really easily, as opposed to if, you know, hey, this is an application, it's kind of the rent versus buy. Yes. You, yes. you know, type discussion. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's Are, you usually say, it's usually in the long term cheaper to buy <laughs> than yes. it is to rent. Yes. Despite the fact that renting, in the cloud, p prices are coming down, they're yep. adding more features as opposed to when you buy something, you've got that box, mm. you know, for Excellent however many years. years. So, yeah. you know, it's a nuanced yeah. discussion, but, yeah. you know, is, 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 is that, is, you, is your environment a little bit more static then, or? It's, it, I would say it's more static, my cur mm. the current environment with the employer I'm with right now. I've worked in the retail businesses where you would have different peak seasons at different yeah. times of the year, and it, Depending if you can get past the compliance and PCI issues and that type of nature, you know, there's always a roadblock. Um, if you can get past that, I can see cloud being very nice, being able to uh, elastically grow out the data center and shrink it back down for those peak buy-in seasons, Christmas, you know, those type of, you know, annual years. But the company I'm with right now, we, you know, laboratory research, there, it's pretty constant, pretty steady. There is no, I, I don't, I don't see. A, uh, an ebb and flow uh, in our data center. All right. Our biggest challenge is making sure that we can react, we have the, the resources to react to the businesses need to change direction. Um, yeah, yeah absolutely. So uh, you bring up a great point, Sean. Um, you know, budgets are always tight. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever comes up and said, hey, great yeah. job, you know, yeah. we're going to give you even more budget than you have last yeah. year. You know, how, how's the technology space treating you? Is virtualization allowing you to keep up with the demands of the business oh. and, you know, flat to negative, you know, uh, budget? Yeah, I, mean, I always like to be in uh, at least an N plus one type of a scenario. It, it, you always want to have enough capacity to grow to. Um, I don't know if I'm answering the question. The well, right, it's, yeah. you know, right, so, so you're planning for growth. Uh, yes. I'm saying is, you know, the business keeps throwing new stuff at you to yeah. do, but they're not necessarily giving you more people or, or more budget to oh, handling yeah. it. So how do, you, how do you keep doing more with less? Automation. Is, 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 okay. Yeah, I mean. Talk, talk about it, what, 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 do you, what do you mean by automation? Is that um, VMware specific, some certain products that you're using, or, uh, you know, what are you automating? Um, not so much products, but, well, products are specific in the sense that, um, you know, one of my major things that comes across my desk is building server, being yeah. requests for building a new virtual machine, new server. Um, you know, using the tools that are out there and available, some of them cost, some of them are free. Uh, I mean, we're, we're an SCCM shop. Um, we, we're also looking, we also look at the free tools of MDT, where we can build up a server, uh, automate the build process, and, and automatically, automatically deploy it. Uh, mm -hmm. Templates kind of work for us, but we, we kind of want to go back to the build it from scratch. It, mm -hmm. It's a lot of, uh, anything that takes multiple steps if we can PowerShell it, if we can automate it, if we can build a task and wrap it around that, uh, that's how we're saving cycles, saving time, uh, to be able to respond quicker to what the business may need. All right, so, so, so you do, yeah. said you do a lot of your own custom scripting and things like that. Yeah. Are you allowing the business any kind of self-service portal or the things that they're able to you know, take on that the That's, IT used to do before? I want to get there. Yeah. And this kind of wraps back around to that AWS uh, discussion of, you know, they can go to a portal today on the web externally. I want that portal to be internal. I want them to be able to make the request internal and, and build that, that uh, uh, build that server for them and have it turn around in an hour or so. Whereas right now they have to go through a ticketing process. I'll, there's a lot of problems with that as well because a lot of times the end user or the server requester doesn't know what they need. Or they may be going off a spec list from, a, from an app vendor which may be written for physical hardware, not so much for virtual hardware. And so, so you get into that, do you really need eight CPUs and you know, half a terabyte of disk space? Or, or is that just what the vendor is saying you need? So. Right. Um, so, so uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I wouldn't no, wait no, off no, Sean, on that Sean, one. Sean, you're, you're, yeah. you're all good there. Yeah. Um, yeah. How many times have you been to, have you been to the VTUG before? I was at the first one. The first one, the nine first years one. ago? Uh, no, the one that was in an Italian restaurant. Oh boy. With you, Mr. Harney you, and Dan Sullivan. So, so, so you're, you're, you're truly old school on this. <laughs> it's well before <laughs> I knew. I've, I, this, I yeah. think my fourth or fifth year coming to this one, yeah. I've been to the one up in Maine a couple of times. Yeah. Um, so, to, you know, what, what brings you to the VTUG? What gets you excited when you come here? Um, well, uh, there's a lot of things. Seeing the new technology, uh, seeing the products that I, so I looked at a product today that was talking about printers. Um, I'm not directly affected by printers in my environment. I mean, I, I built the print server that the printers run on, uh, but it's, uh, say, the desktop group that, that manages that environment. 
but the technology I saw today about printers is something I'm going to bring back to them and say, hey, you guys might want to look into this a little deeper because it's a, it's a neat, neat technology and it might solve some of the issues that we have. Um, so it's the constant refresh of, 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 of vendors and data and, and the camaraderie of talking with the different people that I've met over the years and, and hooking up and talking with those folks. All right, well, Sean Markham with IDEX, really appreciate you joining me for this segment. Always great to get the user uh, discussion here and uh, long time user of uh, virtualization. Uh, it's a long way it's, it's, it's come, uh, you know, and uh, we will be right back with uh, more coverage here from the VTUG after this quick break.